Okay, so we were talking about um, homesteading before. Right. <clears throat> so um, my point here about homesteading is it's incorrect to frame it as you have a right to homestead, just as it would be incorrect to frame it as you have a right to live. You have a right to live, you just have a right to not be killed by somebody. And this is the distinction between positive and negative rights. So, if you have A and B sitting by a campfire, where uh, B kind of has in his mind that he wants to homestead a stick, but then A gets up and he homesteads the stick, he hasn't initiated any conflict with B, because B wasn't actually doing any action which uh, A's homesteading infringed upon, because B can continue to want to homestead that stick right up until the entire time that A has that stick. That doesn't stop any of B's actions from happening. Whereas if A has homesteaded this stick, then B comes over, takes that stick, and throws it in the fire for tries essentially homesteading it, but for a different purpose, that does infringe on what A is doing. So that would be B initiating the conflict there. Whereas A initiates no conflict by the initial homesteading. Yeah, I understand that paradigm and that definition of conflict and rights and homesteading. Um, that example by itself makes sense. And also like the, the notion of, of causality and, and one of those actors, you know, taking an action before the other is, is also, uh, like I said in chat, it's, it's intersubjective, so that's very useful. But if we take that to its logical conclusion, we have to do one of two things, which I don't feel comfortable with, and this is why I reject that, uh, that notion of, con of, of, of conflict and, and rights. And one of the two things we have to do is we must either say that B had a right to homestead that stick, and then that right just disappeared, which is, is very dangerous. Or we have to say that B never had a right to homestead the stick. Of course, if B never had a right to homestead that stick, well, it can, in, we can uh, extrapolate that to, to any action. They didn't have a right to homestead any other stick or any other object, and they don't have a right to homestead anything. And then I would say they then don't have a right to necessarily take any particular action. And I think that's an absurdity. And so we can't have that in our system of rights. We would have to say that they have rights to things, but they have a right to essentially zero things. So I think that's difficult. So that, that, that's my objection to that example. Um, I think you can have a different uh, route apart from B never had the right to homestead uh, or he had the right to homestead, which just disappeared. You could say he always has the right to homestead that which isn't owned. So he, he always had that right, but it's just um, the outcome is almost different. It's like uh, if you have an if statement in programming where you have like an and in, the, in there. So he can still do, he is still has the exact same right of, I have a right to homestead, which is not that which has not already been homesteaded. It's just that, you know, it's been homesteaded now. So it's, his rights are now implying a different set of actions that he's allowed to do, but he still has the same rights. And this is why it's kind of tricky to frame it as you have a right to homestead. This is why I say you have a right to self-ownership, and homesteading is just an implication of that. So he still has the same rights, but he has fewer actions he can perform within those rights. Yeah, I see. So you're, you're uh, separating the concept of rights from actions you can have a right and it can imply a certain set of actions satisfy that right and those actions can change under there are certain transformations we can make to that set of actions and we can say that the the right itself is still the same and it hasn't changed just <clears throat> i want to take a step back uh, and look at the the implications of this system it, it means that we have people going out in the world and taking actions and, and homesteading and what they're capable of doing is influenced by what other people have already done. So what you can go out and do, you know, it, it's dependent on what has already been homesteaded. I have certain property, other people have certain property and 
And what's available and, and left for me is, uh, you know, everything that hasn't been used yet. So just in a practical sense, I think, I think this is, this is going to, you're going to run into some problems here. Like we can talk all day about rights and stuff. And I, I think that's, there's value in that, but there's also some benefit and some people latch onto this or some people make use of this more than others. I think some people would, would be completely uninterested in this, this conversation about rights and they would ask, okay, well, practically who cares? What's the consequence? And I would say the consequence is um, you have some people who, who can go out and act and others can't. And so we've sort of defeated the purpose of the original system, which what I, I would interpret to be uh, the ability to, to have freedom and go out and do things. And so the consequence of what we've done is then they don't have the freedom to go out and do things. They have the freedom to go out and basically ask permission from those who have already obtained their rights and executed their rights um, to actually go and do things. So to me, that's like a, a practical problem. Although I'm not sure if I'm not sure how useful mentioning this is because it might be a bit of a sidetrack. It might be sidetracking us into a, a discussion of, of practicality. Yeah, I think that would be the case, but I don't really even see how what the practical problem would be there. Like, there's many things in life where you have to ask somebody's permission to do it. I have to ask. I have to ask somebody's permission to have sex with them. But that's not like I wouldn't then say. Well, this is practically a problem because I can now do fewer things than if they were to consensually have sex with me. Sure, but it's for me. I recognize, and maybe it's just maybe it's just the way your worldview and how you kind of look at those thing, at things. I, I'm you make a distinction, which you know we, we've discussed before, which is you know the the ability to act independently. And the ability to to act, you know, uh, adding to act uh, while taking into consideration things that have been added to the world, you know, adding and subtracting. I, I think we got into this last time with, you know, asking permission to have sex with someone. Of course, that that is something you have to ask permission to do. And yet, if that person didn't exist, like if that person didn't exist, and we compare those two things, can we say that my rights have been, you know, violated or or something has been taken from me? No, I, I, I wouldn't say that. The way I approach that problem is to say that that person's existence and their, their will is actually creating something. It's creating the opportunity to ask them permission to have sex with them. It's not something I otherwise have. So if they die or they just stop existing or if they never even existed in the first place, then it's not that something has been taken away. It's, being, it's, it's something has not been added if that makes sense, but yeah. But I, so then what do you mean practical problem then? Like what is the practical problem with allowing homesteading? It's, it's not allowing homesteading so much. It's the restrictions placed on property after something's homesteaded. The, the, what, what I would say is, is in order to control something, you, you do have to use it first. And after you use it for the first time, other people need to ask your permission in general. But I also think that there's this other system in place where anyone who owns property needs to pay for it. They need to, to redistribute some of their wealth, not all of their wealth, under very specific reasons in very specific amounts, not just because someone has money. It's like, okay, it's not just all money. It's a very specific reason for having money. That needs to be redistributed. But other than that, yes, every other that you otherwise need to ask permission to do that I think NCAPs would would say you need permission to do. I also agree with. If if I own a bicycle, we can talk about the obligation I have in land value taxes, you know, or just in general redistribution of ground rent, which I using this term because I think using the word taxes is a little specific and I'm talking about something more general. Um what what kind of obligation I have as a as a matter of owning that bicycle, I might need to pay for the ownership of the materials of the bicycle. But outside of that, people still need to ask my permission. And even if I refuse to pay for this obligation I think we have over the bicycle, I don't think it's then totally justified, excuse me, to say that someone can then just take the bicycle from me. In my eyes, it's more like a debt. But again, I I, I might be steering the conversation away i just 
I wanted to t- kind of take a step back and, and mention that because I, I just I think it's valuable to kind of take a picture of the like the world we're creating by making these you know these stipulations. I mean, like, um, I don't really see the justification why they would have to redistribute some of their wealth because they have, uh, you know, uh, sharpened up a stick. Why, do, why does that mean that I suddenly have to give you some whatever land value that we'd have? Right. Well, going back to that example, you had this idea of people have certain rights and then the set of things they can do with them can change. But we can should we can still say that those rights are the same. I don't think that really makes sense. I think if we say people have a right to certain things, the set of actions they have to take under those rights can't change, or we have to say their rights have changed. So the right of B to, in this case, let's say homestead the stick in the example, if they can no longer take the action to homestead the stick, I don't think it's fair for us to say that their rights have, have, the rights are unchanged. I think if the set of actions changes and the right to homestead, that stick is no longer available, the, the action, let's say, is no longer available, then it's not proper to say that the rights are the same. Because then we can, really, we can really kind of go to town with that and say, well, okay, we're going to change the actions you know, much more dramatically. We can, we can say, like, for example, uh, I know we're going to have to, like, flesh out the foundations of this because the, vault, the notions we already have of, um, of action, of, uh, of homesteading and everything, but if I have a right to build a house or something and the state comes along and says, okay, we're going to take this. It's no longer in the set of things you have a right to because it's now claimed by the state and you just have a right to all the things claimed by the state. We could then go you know, and abuse it in this way and say, well, okay, you can take away anything and change their actions to be essentially nothing but still say facetiously that their rights haven't changed. I don't know if that makes any sense. I mean, I, I don't think um, your rights have changed at all in the case of, you know, B wanting to homestead the stick, though. Um, because, you know, you, he still has the right to self-ownership. You don't, the fact that you have a right to self-ownership and you are then allowed to, you know, homestead unowned stuff... That doesn't mean that you are owed everything that you could ever possibly homestead to never be homesteaded by anybody else. That doesn't follow. Right, well, well, first of all, you, you can't be owed homesteading a thing because that's, exactly. that's not produced. Like if, that's if, what I'm saying. You, you, you aren't Sorry. owed the... That's what I'm saying. I'm agreeing on that. You aren't owed the world given state. You aren't owed the world in a completely unhomesteaded state. So somebody isn't taking something away from you by homesteading what is unowned. They, you, you still have the same rights. You didn't, you aren't owed that ability to homestead that specific thing. When you say owed, do you mean like morally or as something that is, is, is provided by other people, something they have to create and give you? Owed like ethically, just like, you know, because you were saying it as if, you know, the fact that A has gone and homesteaded the stick, as if he's taken something away from that. But B isn't, society doesn't owe B the ability to homestead everything. It just has, it just owes B to right. and, not infringe on him. Right, and, and, and again, I would say the consequence is to say society doesn't need to ensure that B, or it ne- doesn't need to avoid interfering with B uh, in, uh, homesteading anything at all because uh any other individual will homesteading a thing would, would violate that and consequently b doesn't have a right to or or isn't owed homesteading anything and so essentially they have a right to to nothing and i think that's kind of silly no 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 it's not that they don't have a it's not that they have a right to nothing it's that they just aren't owed it by somebody else so B is allowed to go out and homestead any unowned thing he wants, but he isn't, uh, ob- people, other people aren't obliged to leave the world completely virgin for him to do that in. Well, uh, th- those are the same thing to me. Other people being obliged to leave the world in an untransformed state is the same thing as saying he has a right to nothing. No, it's not. 
I'm saying that they don't, they no, he, people, other people oh. don't OB this completely virgin land. He still has it. He still has the identical rights. He still has the right to go out and, you know, homestead all he wants. But he just isn't owed being the only one who's allowed to homestead. Well, again, that's, that's, I think, so this is why I asked for clarification on rolling things. Like, you would agree that if there's an empty field out somewhere, it's not provided in any sense to anyone, right? It's like, no one else is actually providing me an empty field. It's just there, right? Yeah. Right. Like, this is the distinction that, that George is to make that, um, it, it seems to be a, a really contentious issue. It's, it's that sort of things are not produced. So I, I just want to make sure that's, that's clear. Um, because when you say they're not owed, what you mean is ethically, I'm not obliged to. Well, like, well, well I'm meaning because I think in um, nature, of course, you know, uh, things which aren't produced are just, you know, nobody's giving that to you. But what you were suggesting is that other people owe you like this, almost like a head start where uh, they aren't allowed to go out and homestead that field. They are like, nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that alone. I'm going to let you use it for whatever you want to use it for. And I think that is them providing you something in a way. You know, it's, it's not like literally them producing the land. It is them giving you the head start so that you can use the land for yourself. That is what I'm saying. Oh, sure. So, I, yeah, I agree with that. Basically, it's, it's a compelled action, isn't it? If, if I say you, you can't use this field, I need to be able to use it. I might. I might do something with it later. I'm basically compelling you to not use the field yeah. as, as it were, right? Okay. Well, by a similar token, if I use, if, if I use the field and I tell you, well, you can't use it now because I'm using it, then that's similarly a compelled action to say that you can't use this field yourself. Sure. In this yep. case, I just happen to be using it, right? But it's a justly compelled so, action. This is why we need to know uh, causality in terms of determining who is the aggressor, because that would be a conflict if we both tried to use this same field. So we need to know who initiated the conflict. And if we don't care about who initiated the conflict, then no aggression matters at all, and we can just go out raping and pillaging. None of it matters. So I think we do care about who initiated the conflict. I think uh, your notion of causality here is, is a non sequitur. Um, I'm not saying it's not valuable, but if we say, you know, who initiates conflict, we're, we're kind of begging the question that one person took an action prior to another. And yes, it's good to know that one person took an action first, but we're using this concept of, of causality to, to actually define what's right and wrong. Yeah, because we need to know who, because wrong is aggression, and aggression is inherently initiating conflict. I don't see how that's, uh, you know, begging the question anyway. Right, but, but you're, the question is, if I understand correctly, why the Rothbardian interpretation of rights of, of one person taking an action with a physical thing in the land then means that they have perpetual ownership, not over the thing, that just not just over the thing that they produce, which is some transformation of the land. I think you'd agree that the, the thing produced is if I, you know, cut up a stick, I, obviously I haven't produced the stick, but I have produced in some sense the change of the stick into a spear. So there's a combination of things. One, which is something I haven't produced, you know, the stick. And then the second is sort of like the, the, the act of me whittling the stick, right? So the, the question of why you then own the land, um, an ANCAP would say it's because you acted with it first, if we then ask, why is one person acting with it first determining that that makes them the rightful owner, it, it would be a, just a tautology, I think, to say, well, it's because I acted with it first. The question is why that's the, the, the correct way of doing it. Uh, I mean, it just let's, let's try and think of a different system, that it's who acted with it second, then nobody would ever be able to act with anything because somebody else is going to come along and take it from them, right? Yeah, that, that wouldn't work either. So, like, what would be the yeah, better system? Be like, who, nobody owns anything? 
No, I would say the better system would be for people to own things and then for people to redistribute the ground rent of those things, to go to courts and determine how much a person is obliged to to owe to other people, who they owe what to for the ownership of the thing. But you do have ownership this... Of the, the physical. But in that, you still do have this concept of, you know, whoever comes first, you know, they kind of own it in some way, right? So you agree with me there? To an extent, I, I'm not sure um, where you might be taking that because I would say um, I could actually own a field by paying mm-hmm. uh, the ground rent for it and not actually have ever homesteaded it, uh, excuse me, homesteaded it at all. I could actually pay for an empty field. I could, we could go and do some kind of auction process where we, we bid for the rest of the field every year, or I can get some insurance contract and they say, okay, we'll take care of this bidding thing or we'll take care of all the rights conflicts. And we want, you know, such and such per year and I can shop around and, and get a good deal. And, and ultimately I'm actually, I actually never transform the land or I never even touch it. Uh, maybe I just look at it and I can still own it under my system. Well, then we need to kind of go over how an earth ownership comes into being, because I would say the only way you can acquire ownership of something is either by homesteading it or trading it with somebody. Yes, I under my my belief of how you can come to own something ju- to to have justified control over something is by bidding for or paying for uh, the ground rent of that thing. Who are you paying? I'm paying other individuals, society at large. But if they don't own it, then why are you paying for it? If they don't already own it, this sounds like you're trading for it, but like nobody currently owns it. So how could you possibly be trading for with society as a whole? I'm, I'm not trading it with anyone. Uh, I come to own it by paying for it because it compensates them for the physical things that they no longer have access to. Or no, they, they no longer even have the possibility of using. But why do they need compensation for that? What's that? Why do they need compensation for that? They need compensation because they no longer have the ability to act with that thing. And acting with na- physical nature is, is required to act at all. Yes, yeah, but like they don't own that. They don't, they, again, they aren't owed the ability to act with whatever they fuck they want. You know, they're, they are owed acting within their rights. That's all you get. Right. I, I disagree with that paradigm. I believe that they're owed compensation for the physical nature because they can no longer act with it. And they otherwise would be, uh, if I didn't own it, I didn't pay for it. And that that acting that they might be able to do is is necessary for them to to do anything to to act at all and is required for self ownership. I mean, they can still act without, you know, being able to act in this one specific way. They can still act in other ways. So you haven't like taken I something agree. from can, them. I do agree they can still act in other ways, but if I had not come along, and 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 said that I want ownership over this thing, they would have been able to act with it. So in that sense, I've taken it from them. They their ability to act with that thing has now been essentially eliminated or or temporarily eliminated. Sure, but like why is that something I should care about? That they can no longer, you know, they can no longer go out and till this field. Like they should have got there first. Why is that? Why should I care? No longer till the field. Uh, you should care that they can no longer till the field. Because you should care about what things they, what, what parts of physical nature they, they physically and, and rightfully have access to. Uh, because without access to it, they could not act and they could not have self-ownership. And we should care about whether or not people can act and have self-ownership. I mean, you still have self-ownership. Self-ownership uh, implies Rothbardian ethics, though. I, I disagree. I think self-ownership implies the... Uh, the right to act with nature, the right to use my will with the entire physical universe. And Why does it imply that? Hmm? Why does it imply your right to act with the entire physical universe as if nobody else had touched it? Uh, self-ownership implies the right to act with the entire physical universe as if no one had ever touched it. 
because sofa ownership implies the ability for, you know, no other will except for mine to control, to justifiably control uh, my own self, which is to say my own will. And my will is exhibited through the, the my, my will manifests through actions in physical nature. So to say that I'm the only owner of my will is to say I'm the only one who decides how that will uh, manifests in, in the physical universe. I mean, like me going out and tilling the field isn't me imposing my will on you. It's me imposing my will on the field. It's imposing your will in the field, yes, but it's also you're imposing your will on me because after you till the field, you must impose your will on me by then saying, this piece of nature is no longer something that you can use. Uh, it's no longer something I can impose my will on. That's, that wouldn't be me imposing my will on you. That If you came along and tried to use it, that would be you imposing your will on me because the field is now an extension of myself because it's owned by me. If we assume prop- Rothbardian property rights, yes, I mean, but just logically, I don't agree with that as Rothbardian property rights. I mean, just logically, how am I imposing my, my will on, how am I imposing myself on your will by going out and tilling a field? Like that isn't an extension of you in any way. So it's just completely natural. So how is that imposing me on you? If, if I have my will and it manifests in physical nature and you step in and modify that in any way, which includes changing the field and and especially claiming ownership over it, that is you interfering with my ability to express my will over physical nature and, and therefore it's in a, in a position of will over me. Would you agree that climbing Everest first is an action? Would I agree that climbing Everest first is an action? Uh, no, I would not. Why not? Um, it's as if, because it implies climbing Everest first is a different action from climbing Everest second. And I don't think that those are different acts. I think one person climbing Everest is the same as some other person climbing Everest. So, I mean, if that's the case, if I climb Everest, do you think like every single person who's climbed Everest has like the same clout? It's clearly society in some way values being the first over being the second. I mean, like, but that's what an action is. It's, you know, these, the, the, the way you value an action matters entirely. Like, I might very much want to be the first to climb Everest, but after somebody's already done it, I'm like, eh, don't want it anymore. And you've kind of like taken away that action from me by climbing there first. No, I, I don't agree at all. Because again, you, you climbing Everest second or climbing it first, are the same act. So if I climb Everest first, I have not prevented you from climbing Everest. Now compare that with if I climb Everest and tell you that you can't be the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth to climb Everest or anything without my permission. That would be that would be telling you that you can't act in that way. No. I, I only I would only agree to, to climbing Everest in any order as a singular action. And if, if one person values climbing Everest first over climbing Everest 30 second, that's up to them. That's their value judgment. And that, that's a, you know, that, that's a decision they can make. And that's, that, that's not, that's not up to me. I mean, I'm not te- technically, we could say the same thing about homesteading. If I homestead a stick and sharpen it up, I'm not telling you that you can't be second to homestead that, you know, you just have to wait until it's like decomposed, gone into the earth, you know, the universe has cycled around and it's a stick again ready to be homesteaded. I'm not telling you that you can be second. It's just, you're never going to be able to really within a human lifespan. I might, you know, abandon the stick at some point and then you could be the second person to homestead it. That'd be fine. You're, you're, yeah, you're telling me that I have to wait until you abandon it in order to to use it. If I I climb Everest, I'm not telling you that you have to wait until I climb Everest. But, uh, like, mm-hmm. The climbing Everest example, that's just kind of showing you that, like, you know, the, 
I can reduce the number of things that you are able to do. Climbing Everest first is a thing that you can do, you know, really get into the world record books and whatnot. I can reduce the number of things you are doing, able to do in your life without, you know, infringing on you. I, well, again, I don't agree that you climbing Everest first actually inhibits me from taking in a similar action because I don't differentiate between climbing Everest first and climbing Everest second. Well, let's, Whereas, let's, let's again, do it. If you own the stick. Let's do something which is definitely an action, right? You know, if I say you are allowed to have sex with me, then you are suddenly, oh, wow, I got an extra action I can do. I can have sex with this guy. But then if I say, nope, you're no longer allowed to have sex with me ever again. I have taken away a thing that you are possibly able to do, but I've not infringed on your rights. Sure. And the reason why I don't agree with, with that thing and infringement of rights is because you've taken away something that you previously added, you previously existed because of your will, as a consequence of your will, right? I wouldn't have the ability to have sex with you if it weren't for your will, right? Your physical body wouldn't exist. So taking away this, this act that I could possibly partake in, you haven't actually taken anything away that you didn't previously provide. So relative to what would have been around if your will was absent, there's no change. But I did still take something away, right? Yeah, relative to, to, to what you added after your will you know, came into being, you did change something. But I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with the difference between the current state of, of the world or, or, or what I'm capable of doing relative to the absence of your will. All right, then. Um, so it does, does that make sense? Um, so I don't really, you know, see the justification like, for, you know, um, why is uh, everybody acting as if nobody else existed? Uh, sorry, could you say that again? I, I think you cut out. I don't really see the justification for being allowed to act as if nobody else existed. Sure. So the, the justification for being allowed to act as if no one else existed is because acting as if no one else existed is the free expression of my will um, as if I am the only, you know, justified controller of that will. Not even just justified, just, just even in general. Acting as if no one else had expressed their will in the physical world, as if no one else had acted at all. That's the expression of my will in its its purest state. It's it's the expression of my will with with basically no you know no gods no masters, um, and 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 no other controllers. Um, yeah, but I mean, like, why does why on from the fact that you own yourself? What does that mean that you can therefore exercise your will? You know, as if nobody else had acted. Because this is again, you know, positive versus negative rights. Right. right. So you're saying, like, why is that derivative of self-ownership? Yeah. Well, so that I would say <clears throat> acting again, acting as if your will was the only will in existence in the universe is a consequence of self-ownership. It's not even really a consequence of self-ownership. It's, it's the consequence of self-ownership. There's it's, it's like a, an if and only if that it's that's the, the singular or, um translation of self-ownership as an abstract concept into you know a set of physical actions uh, self-ownership is the we should say maybe will ownership almost it's it's uh, basically just how i'm interpreting self is, is will to again avoid kinsella's i'm not sure if kinsella was the first one to do it he's the first one i read about doing it is, is interpreting self as body i think that's arbitrary interpreting self as a will it's it's the only owner or controller over my will is is me and if I'm the only controller over my will is me, I guess you could possibly say nature is is also controlling my will because nature is providing you know a set of uh, it's providing a, a certain uh, universe for me to go out and change um, as as a consequence of manifesting my will. But I can't go to nature and sue it or even really converse with it at all. Um, so whether or not that's that's something that's constricting my will is kind of relevant. Ultimately, then the, the only relevant controller of my will should should then be me, and it shouldn't be anyone else. It should be 
my decisions and my choices to to take my will and and use it on the physical universe should only be me and if that's the case then the only actors here are basically me and like let's say nature sure or the universe or whatever and it's it's not anyone else so no one else's will is is present um but like me if we're gonna have nature as like an actor then in that sense then me going and uh you know homesteading something out of nature that isn't me taking something from you that's me taking something from nature well there's but there's a there's an interaction there though right because the, the, the inter, there's an intersection of, of me expressing my will and you expressing your will. We we can't express our will over anything except for nature. So nature is kind of a unique actor in this sense. It's, there's nature, and then there's and then there's will, and and you can replace will with you, you can put any person in the driver's seat for the for will. It could be me, it could be you, it could be Bill Gates, it could be someone else. Will can be driven by you know any individual. Nature, on the other hand, is only driven by by nature. There's only one of those, at least as far as we know. Um, yeah, I mean, if we found parallel universes, this, this conversation might be very different. It might be saying, okay, well, if it's very cheap for you to, to go shift into another plane of reality, then you, you can't complain because you can, I homestead this tree. There's an identical tree in some other plane of reality. But <clears throat> anyway, it's the, if you go and enact your will on nature, like you say, you're, you're changing nature. That's true. But I also must change the same nature. That's the, currently the way, the way that the relationship works is, is I only express my, my will upon one particular physical universe so if you then express your will in that physical universe the the the, the nature here using the word again you're using the word a little differently um of my will which is to <laughs> express it against the nature again here as like the, you know, the physical world like 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 plants and, and and dirt and that kind of thing that's been modified because that relationship is is between my will and the physical universe so so yes, you. It's like a. It's kind of a uh, kind of like a love triangle. So, yes, if you express your will uh, against the physical universe, you are changing the physical universe, but you're also affecting the the second relationship here, which is my relationship with the universe, my ability to express my, my will with a physical universe, my manifestation of my will with a physical universe. I don't know if I didn't hear in there um, why that means that me taking something from nature means that I'm taking something from you because you didn't own that thing in nature. So I'm clearly not infringing on you. Well, again, it's because if you take something from nature, you're affecting my relationship with nature, right? So if, if you affect a stick, you're, you're affecting nature. Sure. Are you affecting my will? Well, my will only exists as manifestations of changes to nature. It's not some abstract thing floating out in the void somewhere my my ability to express my will is only with nature so if you change nature you change the only thing i express my will with and therefore you change my ability to express my will and therefore you can change the the number of of people who can to make decisions about my ability to express my will and you therefore change the number of people who uh have the ability to to make uh choices about my will itself in the, but the expression of the will isn't the will itself your will is still intact i haven't infringed on your actual actions i've infringed on what you might have wanted to do not on what you are doing sure but you you're infringing on on my ability to express my will means someone else has now made a decision about my ability to express my will. Again, it's only with the same physical nature that you have the ability to express your will with. So if you go and <clears throat> make a decision about um, some, some physical aspect of nature, um, the, the things that I'm able to express my will with also change. So you're also making a decision that makes sense. Yeah, so I'm changing, you know, what you are able to express your will with. I don't see how this is an infringement on you. It's an infringement because the only person who should be able to make a decision about what I express my will with is me. That's self-ownership. No, it's, uh, you, 
you should be able to self ownership is you should be able to act uninfringed, not just you should be able to you know potentially be able to act. So can you repeat that? You you should self ownership means that you should be able to act completely uninfringed, where your actions themselves aren't being infringed upon. Self ownership isn't where I should be allowed to act as if somebody else hadn't previously acted. That is not implied by ownership at all. Well, I would, I would just have to say I disagree. If, if you are able to act in a way that, that changes what I'm able to act with, then the, the, let's say the substrate or the foundation of what I'm able to act with changes, and therefore others are able to make a decision about what I can act with and what I ultimately will act with. And I should be the only one making that decision. I should be the only one making a decision about what bits of nature I, I make connections with to uh, choices uh, about, about my will, about expressions of my will. I just really don't see the justification for that. Well, it's, okay, let's say, let's say um, will is, is the ability to make a set of uh, connections or relationships between physical nature, different points in space and points in time with uh my will itself not not the, the the expression of it but the actual will some some abstract concept floating in a void in space you know a relationship between the will and a bit of physical nature is an expression of of that will and the only one who should be able to set up those relationships let's say I, as if i could see through time and and draw strings between different points in space and time and in different probability or, or possibility sets like a, a basically it's basically a set between these points and and my will um the only person who should get to determine that set right before i die or he death of the universe or whatever is me if you yourself draw connections between your own will again as some other concept in, in abstract space and uh different points in nature you you create a set of relationships. Well, these sets of relationships are exclusive. So if you draw a set and you pick a point in space and time that's identical to a, a point in space and time that I pick, well, that's that's not that's incompossible. That's that's incompatible. It's not jointly um, compatible, or was the other one mutually uh, compatible? Or or, or you, you understand what I'm saying here? So so if you pick a point in space and time, that's not possible. It, it, it's not possible for that to even exist with a set that I pick that has the same point in time. So if I'm the self, if I'm the self owner, essentially what that means is, is that you, your will doesn't even exist. It's, it's that I get to pick a set of points in, in space and time and that point in space and time, those points in space and time, those, excuse me, that the relationship between these points and my will must be guaranteed. Okay, so, but like okay, so yeah, if if we both picked the exact same point in space time that we wanted to uh, homestead in, then yeah, there would be conflict there. So I agree that that would have conflict, but then we need to know who caused the conflict. What what you're implying with the word cause is that we basically take turns picking points in space and time. And so you will pick one. I mean, we kind of do because we live in a causal universe. We don't live in like this God's eye view where we can see all of space time at once. So we do like pick points one after the other in one instant after. Sure. And, and I agree with, with, I, I agree with that. So the, the way our wills actually work is we, we, we kind of take turns picking points in space and time. So what I'm saying is if there's ever a point where both of us pick the same point in space and time, that is problematic because that means we can't pick, we can't pick the same point in space and time. So that, that's basically impossible. If we both pick the same one, basically it's like a computer returns an error and says this is impossible. And so that relationship is impossible. So yeah, so that would be conflict. In this case, we can, we can say, oh, hold on. Right. I, I understand what you're saying. You're saying one of us will pick up the point first. Yeah. And the, the consequence of this, even if I agreed with you, the consequence of this is that when I'm making these, when I'm, I'm picking these relationships, as I'm basically 
selecting a point in space and time to create a connection, create a relationship between that point in space and time and my will. I must kind of walk around you. I must, a, as you pick things, that set of points in space and time are basically zeroed out for me. I'm now no longer able to pick them. I'm told that they're, those options aren't available. Like they're, they become null and void. So the agents in this case, again, even if I agreed with you, the, the agents that, that basically determine the set of relationships that I will ultimately have, like in the end, again, of either when nature stops existing or I stop existing, my, my will stops existing. The, the, let's say the computers in this, this simulation, and what that set will be, are, are not just me. And let's say, for example, nature, um, it's also you. You will also determine what I'm able to pick, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, what I'm suggesting is that if I can maybe phrase, how, how you would determine what's ethical in the situation. You would say, it's not the fact that both of us pick things and both of us, and, and again, let's say metaphorically, nature will ultimately determine what relationships between my will and points in space and time exist. Freedom means that we will pick points in space and time and then simply retain them. And it's only that we pick points in space and time and then they continue. So you pick a point in space and time and that continues. Essentially, you retain ownership over it. You retain justified control over it. And then I pick one and then I retain that. And so it's like, it's only that the second person to come around and pick that point in space and time essentially doesn't do that. They pick something else. And I think, I think maybe this is just a, a very deep um, disagreement we have about philosophically um, what what freedom means here i, th I think you used the word syllogism earlier it, it means syllogistically is that, is that even a word basically the, the 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 what is logically implied by saying we have self-ownership you would say it's this it's this system for one person will pick a point in space and time and then i pick from the remaining lists whereas i would say it's for anyone to create any list that they want you know whether it's causally or if they have the ability to see through time or whatever, it's, it's, they go through picking points. It's for them to pick whatever points they want as if there was no one else picking points. And it may be that there's no way to reconcile these two views. I, I think at that point, we could just say one is going to have better consequences than the other. And that's, that's pretty intersubjective. It's not, it's not totally intersubjective, but it's still something we can use to determine which one's better. But it, I don't. I don't really know how to resolve that. Um. Oh, hold on. I think my turn's ready. See ya.